Okay. Um, it was back in 1999 when I was 13 years old. I was really fascinated by yo-yo. So if you look at it, you recognize what yo-yo is. So I learned quite fast, and I become one of the best yo-yo player in my school. So I literally have more than 30 yo-yo in my, in my house, and I love to show off in front of people my skills and techniques. So that's when I uh, find out very interesting fact that my classmate loves and find the value of my, my yo-yo uh, when they also have their own. And my yo-yo is not so special. It's still the same, same quality, same price. But they find the value of my yo-yo so much greater than what they have. So I end up selling 100 yo-yos with $500 net profit. So why am I telling you this story? In fact, I was a influencer back in the day. So from my personal experience, influencer is not a new concept. The idea of reaching out to the buyers by those who influence by, this is total, it's not totally new. What has been changed is the practical definition of what and who constitutes influencer is. So um, due to the changes and advance of web-based technologies and social medias, this has been, uh, have a great impact. Social media has two, uh, two changes. First, it allows influencers to scale their opinion and it allows people to find their opinion much more quicker and much more easier than ever before. So brands are taking advantage of all these technologies and web-based te communications and social media. So that's why we see all these ads and, and all this information are pouring at us at any moment. So consumers like us and you guys wonder why, what should I focus on and what's the truth and who should I trust and what I rely on. So that's why um, the, there's a, the study from Nielsen 2014. Consumer trust authoritative contents over brand contents and ads. In summary, people trust people over brands. This is a core reason why influencer marketing this day, uh, this day um, has been resurging. And this is the core reason why all the global brands are fighting over to secure the key influencer mar uh, influencers in, in the world. Although there's a lot of good examples in out there how influencer marketing can be utilized and has a great impact on the in, um, in the marketing uh, areas, but in general, Vietnam, uh, in Vietnam, in influencer marketing is perceived as expensive and ineffective. And there's a reason why it's happening. First, brands have very high expectation on influencers and their capability and the outcomes they can deliver. However, influencers in Vietnam tend to have very low capability as an individual, and um, their, their understandings of marketing and then influencer is very limited. Second, brands tend to outsource their uh, relationship and channels rather than building a relationship. So, as a result, the message as, um, from influencer when they deliver their message to their fans, it, lack, it lacks authenticity and it doesn't resonate with their fans. Third, the seasonality of the marketing campaign. 
and how it is designed. It pre prevents brands and influencers from building a strong and long-term relationship. If you look at the traditional influencer marketing campaign, how it looked like, it's typically a separated a spurt of energy, and all of a sudden, the energy burst. So influencer, influencer marketing is created and then embarked upon, and then influencers are engaged, and then all of a sudden, everything stops until the next campaign started. So this is the reason this, the time gap from here to there is not a long enough period to build an, a meaningful relationship with the influencers. And influencer doesn't necessarily understand what brands want to deliver, what's their value, what they try to achieve. So that's why their message to, uh, when they deliver to their fans, it doesn't resonate. It, it's not relevant. So due to all these challenges, when brands approach with influencer marketing with outsourcing their channels and relationship, they cannot target a uh, metrics like purchase, metrics like sales lead. So they end up just targeting awareness, given the same fact that they, they have to pay the same cost of working with influencers. However, if brand approaches with influencer, to build a relationship, to, to have a long-term relationship by creating their content and building their own contents and support their content and involve them in, in their content. And lastly, co-creating their content. If you do so, um, the message of influencers, they can, what they can deliver to their fans become more authentic, more pervasive, more um, re resonate with their fans. So that's why, that's when marketers and brand can target the metrics of the purchase and metrics of the sales lead. Given the same fact that you have to pay the same cost for the influencer marketing booking, so now the ROI becomes quite high. This is something that I want to re recommend for the brands and the marketers. It's called Always On Programs, which all the touch points of the influencer and, and brands is leveraged, not necessarily spontaneously, but, but regularly. If you do so, you can successfully build a strong relationship and long-term relationship, and you end up making influencer to become your loyal fan. As a result, the impact of activation per influencer will grow exponentially over time, and the cost of activation per influencer will be dropped for significantly over time. This is for today. Thank you.